Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Achakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world eagerly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, whom this world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, those men that are doing this work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth. And now, much love to the one third of you believers out there. To you all, I say shalom and greetings. And Lord, in this lesson is edifying. All right, so I'm going to make this a quick one. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of a lot of talk on the Leave the World Behind uh, movie. It's a lot of a lot of little gems up in there. You know, um, and I actually found a few more. You know, I'm not going to get into all of them. This is the main one that I want to get to. This picture that's here, but I do want to say uh, there's a scene. Maybe I might pop the picture in. There's a scene where, uh, you know, they making a, you know, you listen, uh, Canadian Prepper had a breakdown for it. He missed some stuff, but he still has some good points. But he basically said the house is like a, a slave ship. And they, they show you from the top to the bottom and always the the Jakes are in the basement and the, the Edomites looking guys are at the top, you know. But then Jake in the basement look like wooden. But he's the, I said, Jake's, He's on. He's the one sleeping on the floor, when he's the king of the castle. So it's really like a representative of us. We, we at the bottom, and Esau, uh, sitting at the top. But he, he the one who owns the house. All right. I mean, actually, let me get this. This what it reminds me of. It don't necessarily fit this per se, but it reminds me of this. Um. This scripture just came to mind right now. I only had about three prepped up. But this is Ecclesiastes 10 and uh, 6. It says, Folly is set in, set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. All right, first off, he, he had money, he had wealth, he had substance, you know, and he he was at the bottom of the house. That's how the same is here in America. Folly, the things that are full of folly and nonsense are getting a lot of views and attention. But when we, we, we come out humbly and try to tell people the truth, they don't want to hear it, you know. But it says, I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. You see, so it's like that's, that's opposite effect. The servants, which are the Eomites that are currently on the horses, they're in the high seat, you know. They're in the high part of the house. But princes walking as upon servants upon the earth, us being the lowly, us being at the bottom, but we're the true princes of the earth. Now he was sleeping on the floor. And he's the king of the castle. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that's how that's how the world is right now. But the Lord is gonna gonna correct this. But uh anyway, I might have to sneeze so salakia. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um so uh you know, so this this sign here, it says Commodus, right? I can't read everything on there, but it says made in the USA, Commodus Survival Shelters. And it has the, the logo. It's like the radiation or radioactive logo. And this is when the little girl found the bunker. And uh, and I say little girl, but that girl actually 18. It's a couple scenes where she looks really grown in the face. And I was like, why? You know, that's probably Esau trying to do what he do on the P-file stuff. But that girl, 18 years old, but she looked like they're trying to make her look 14 or 13. But anyway, uh, I looked up this word commodus here. OK, and I, you know, I've heard that name, obviously, you know, when you in the truth, you you know, about all of the different uh, Roman generals and emperors and things like that. But um, I just got like two or three scriptures and I just wanted to bring out what it when I looked up Rob, uh, commodus, it says. Somebody wrote this on like Reuters, uh, Reuters or something. Read it. it. Said it leave the world behind. Twenty twenty three. The bunker is manufactured by a company called Commodus Survival Shelters. Commodus was a Roman Empire whose reign generally marks the end of the Golden Age of Peace in the Roman Empire. Okay, so it says Commodus was a Roman Empire. His reign marks the end of a Golden Age of Peace. You know. Uh, let me see something. This just made me think of another verse. Uh, 
Um, let me get this. This is a uh, Daniel seven and verse. Seven, it says that after this, I saw the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong, exceeding, and had great iron teeth that devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. You know, so. Hold on. When you had a. Uh, uh, Greek or Greece and Rome, right? Um, you know, it was uh, it was likened unto that uh, uh, the great great iron teeth, because that's the that's the uh, strength. Iron is a very strong uh, metal, you see, and they also represented their military might, and they began to take over. Uh, you know, ultimately, you know. The, the, a large part of the world through their military might, their strength, you know, but now, uh, even though America is Rome, their military is going to fail them. You know, it says that they have four war to fight, but during this time, the Roman Empire was great based on uh, uh, their military and their strength and their fierceness, but this is all going to change, and you see now it's the end of an eon, it's the end of an era. And so, now we're modeled after this this image of the beast that we're living in now, where we're living in modern day Rome. You know, they had something going popular recently about people being sad about the Roman Empire or something like that. You know, but now we got Babylon sprouting out of this thing, man. Okay. That little that little horn, okay? But ultimately, this is uh that this is my this is Rome all over again, okay? So, when you understand that, it says Commodus, and he was it was the end of a reign, but let me read the next one I saw. It says, after Emperor Commodus was killed, the end of his reign similarly marked the descent of the Roman Empire into chaos, and his death was followed by the year of five emperors. His death is generally regarded as marking the end of Roman peace and prosperity, the Pax Romana, and the beginning of the empire's dramatic decline. You see, and they just they just threw this all in the movie, man. You know, but this is uh, Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain, and so she may be healed. See, Babylon is fallen, man, and they, are, they had a scene where they showed the flag on uh, the moon. And the, the flag was, you know, when they tried to say Jake, Land, I mean, Esau landed on the moon, which he didn't. But, man, the flag was old, crusty, dusty, beat up, great, destroyed. You know, it didn't have that blue and red, white, and red, white, and blue uh, joy and and expression to it. You know, so they're letting you know it's, it's over for America, man. These are so many warnings. They said the, the main thing you want in a situation like this is to get a heads up. And that's what they're giving you. They're giving the, your average Joe the heads up, but these people aren't paying attention. It says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his country. For her judgment reaches into the heaven and is lifted even to the skies. And that was spiritual. Even literally, it was like looking, you see, the. Uh, it's like looking down on Babylon from the moon. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, but it says she she can be healed. She won't be healed. It's over for uh, America, man. All right, this is our uh, Revelation eight, and I'm gonna, I mean eighteen. I'm gonna just skip to a couple of verses. Uh, verse two, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, "Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird." See, Babylon is over for this place, man. It's going down. Okay, uh, I'm gonna jump down to verse. Uh, seven, how much has she glorified herself and lived deliciously? So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and of no widow I, I shall see no sorrow. That's what America thinks, but America's about to see great sorrow, the worst times ever. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord power who judgeth her. You see, so it's about to go down in America, man. All right, 
you about to see great plagues come in these last days. All right, and then at the end of it all, <clears throat> missiles burning. Going to judge this place in one hour of missiles, just like they saw in that movie, the missiles. But see, that was a, a pretty version of it, just seeing one or two missiles. It's going to get lit up. That was just New York that they showed. And they try to act, and that is fierce because they were afar off, right? The scriptures say that. Uh, stand, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And even if they are far away, that that radiation and stuff, that, that thing going to be far reaching, you know? So, hey, this place is about to fall. This place is about to go down. But Esau sneaking his stuff in there. But it's the end of an era, the end of an age, right? The time for. The Israelites to rule. I got one more. All right. These scriptures just be coming. Um, got to get this one. This is 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 8. Um, it says, and he said unto me. Uh, let me turn to 7. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that following? So what's going to be the end of this first era and the beginning of the second one? And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, excuse me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, right? And uh, Esau are the so-called white people, and Jacob are the, the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. For Esau is the end of the world, right? That Roman Empire, that that, that Edomite way is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of that follow. So you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are about to rule the earth. It says the hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other question answers asked or not. But we're about to rule. It's the end of their era. It's the end of their phase. Their time for rulership. And our Lord, Yahweh Shah, has come back to save us and put the earth aright. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, or Chakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.